lots of history here in Cape May. So as we go around here, I'll tell you some of the history of the tent. I'll point out some of me and Stormy's favorite places too. And if you have any questions at all as we're going along here, just feel free to ask at any point and I will be happy to answer those questions as best as I can. Now before we really get rolling, though, are you both hearing me okay over the speaker? Yep, 100%. Yes. All right, perfect. So a little bit of background about the town here so you have an idea of where we're coming from. Cape May here was first settled way back in the 1600s by the Dutch. So it was around 1620 that the explorer Captain Cornelius Jacobson May had been sailing our waters here. He really hadn't been looking for us. He was actually looking for a northwest passage to China. So he sailed down around our Cape here, went up the Delaware River. I'm not sure how far he made it up that river before he realized that he was not route to China. But he did eventually turn around and come back down. And he decided that he liked the Cape so much that he named us after himself, which is a pretty nice thing to be able to do. So he had not been the first person to have discovered the Cape here. There had been other explorers sailing our waters here. But they thought the land was pretty worthless, so they kept on going along. And that was because we were all marshland. So nobody really wanted much to do with marshland, so they kept on sailing by. But Captain May, he wasn't really concerned about the land. He had been looking out towards the water. And what he had noticed was that we had a very abundant population of whales. And they used to hunt whales for their oil. That was the most efficient thing to burn for light back in those days. So he sent word back home that this would be an excellent spot to set up a whaling town. And so that is exactly what they did. So they settled here, set up that whaling town. And they were quite successful hunting whales off the coast here for quite some time. So this is Diesel passing us on the left there. Yeah, we were her thing all day long. Wow. So it was not until the 1800s then that they um, started to see a bit of a change here in Cape May. So in the 1800s, people were really realizing that they had a little bit more of something that they hadn't had much of before, and that was free time. And so they were looking to try to find a way to spend that free time. And so they started coming to shore towns like Cape May, looking for some rest and relaxation. So very much the same reason why we would come to Cape May nowadays. So they thought that the salt air and salt water had therapeutic properties. And I would certainly agree with that. I think it's a good bit of therapy coming here to Cape May. I think we all deserved a little bit of Cape May therapy this year, too, after the year we've been having, too. So I'm glad you guys made it here for a quick visit to Cape May. So when people start, first started coming here, they weren't really equipped at all to be a summer resort town. Though that's what we were turning out to be. So the people that were already living here, fishing and farming in the area, they started to open up their homes, offer up the extra rooms in their houses as guest rooms. And then as things really did start to take off, that's when they started to build the guest houses and hotels. And so now we are starting to talk about Cape May, as we know and love it today, as New Jersey's first seaside resort town. So though we are the oldest seaside resort town, I would argue we are the prettiest one too. We do have over 600 Victorian era houses here on the island, which is one of the biggest collection of Victorian era architecture in the United States. It's a very nice claim to fame for Cape May. I would also say that's probably why it's so difficult to pick out a favorite house. There's just so many beautiful houses to choose from here. And we will see quite a few of them here this evening on our tour. Many of them decked out with their holiday lights too. I don't need the blanket, I'm fine. Hmm? I don't need the blanket, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> I'm toast. I like the mainstay inn, it's so pretty. Oh, the mainstay inn is lovely there. A bed and breakfast here in Cape May, but it was originally an illegal gambling parlor. <laughs> so if you take a look at that Italianate style there, you will see that includes the floor to ceiling windows on the porch there. Uh -huh. Also no railings on the porch. So that was certainly part of the Italianate style, but that was also there to offer the gentlemen who were in there illegally gambling a quick escape route in case the police showed up while they were gambling. Nice. 
So had the police come down Columbia Avenue here, you might have seen the gentleman running straight through the windows and right off the railingless porch. They were trying to at least get their feet on the ground by the time the police got there because the law at the time stated that you had to be touching the building to be charged with the crime of gambling. Uh. It's a very nice loophole in the law for our gentleman gambling here in Cape May, I'd say. I would say it makes me wonder who was writing those rules, but I think that we can all take a guess at that one. Yes. We did have up to four gambling parlors here on the island, so this was really the place to be back then for all your entertainment needs. Did they have brothels too? That oh, those? sure, yeah. Usually those went hand in hand, the gambling and the brothels. So any of these houses, the specific brothel of the... Uh... Uh, so I, I heard that there was some at the mainstay. I'm not sure how true that is, but the... Um, one on the corner of this street, uh, when we first turned down, it's um, yes. a bed and breakfast called the House of Royals. Yes. Uh, it has, um, the first floor was actually a pharmacy, so that's why the, the bottom windows look like shop windows. Yep. The second floor was the gambling parlor, and then the third, third floor was everything yeah. else. Okay. So, uh, so that one definitely did, and I think the, um, the house called the Sisters by the Sea, that's also on Columbia Avenue here, I'm yeah. sure they had, a, um, you know, some ladies in the night there, too. I would say it was definitely a man's world back in the 1800s, that's for sure. Though the most lasting impact on many of these houses is from the ladies. Us ladies were making our own lace patterns back in those days, and we would design our own lace curtains. And so when a lady was married, she would present a sample of her lace curtains to the carpenter of the house. And he would try to recreate that pattern in the woodwork of the house. Oh, the gingerbread. So that is what you're seeing reflected on these houses here in Cape May, in the fancy woodwork known both as uh, gingerbread and as carpenter's lace. I would say they look um, maybe even more so like um, gingerbread houses with um, all the holiday lights here too. Is there a favorite house you have that's decked out in lights here? Um, you know, the, um, the Mason Cottage that's behind us, I really do like. Um, and, you know, at least for the holiday steps, I love Sweetheart. Uh, but really, they're all quite pretty, especially on Columbia there. They're kind of all lined up, uh, yeah. looking quite nice. So it's nice that they, um, still decided to decorate, even though the, you know, holiday season wasn't exactly what we were, you know, hoping for it to be. Was it slow? Um, yeah, definitely the, I mean, the entire season wasn't, um, you know, we started later and then it really never took off quite to what it, it always had been. And December, um, usually they have the Christmas parade and then they have the, um, the, um, holiday house tours, which, um, you actually are, we're usually able to go into some of the houses to see, mm -hmm. uh, the interiors too, of many of the bed and breakfasts and sometimes private residences too. Uh, would open up their homes so that you could um, go and see their interior decorations and of course that's just not something that we can do uh, this year because of COVID so it was uh, you know just a bit slower than it normally was for the holidays. So we're excited to see what um, 2021 has in store for us. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Do you guys end at, uh, like, after January 1st? Uh, so we, um, we go run until, um, New Year's. Right. And then, um, the owner might come out, like, on weekends and, you know, for, like, Valentine's Day, you know, like, right. special occasions, things like that. Because the horses still need to, you know, do something. Uh, right. they don't just want to, you know, stand around in a field. Right. Uh, so he gets them out and, you know, gets them a little bit of exercise and we'll do some tours if there's, you know, there's, we'll get some day trippers on the weekends yeah. and, and things like that so but our you know the our season for the drivers usually you know runs from april until until no. you know january 1. so this is the longest i've stayed down here usually i've just been here in the summer mm. so it does get cold down here it turns out <laughs> where are you from i'm from north jersey Okay. So yeah, no, I knew it was going to be cold, but it just feels like such a summer place. <laughs> and I got to play with Stormy a little bit longer this year, so that was good. Step easy, sweetheart. Wooden 
staircase on the southern mansion just here through the trees from the back of the building there. Oh, look at those it's a very elegant spiral wooden staircase there. And then this entire wing that we're going by here, this was all part of the addition that was added on to the original house, which we will also see as we continue around. So this part was added on in the 1990s, so not part of the original house, but was part of the original blueprints for the house that they found when they were doing the initial renovations there. They found many of the original furnishings inside the house, and that included an old desk. And it was in the drawer of that old desk that they found the original blueprints. And from those blueprints, they saw that George Allen, the original owner of the house, had never finished his house. So they were able to get permission to add the wing on based on those blueprints. So the Southern Mansion is uh, our largest bed and breakfast nowadays with 26 guest rooms. But it was originally a uh, single family summer home. When did it start being a, a, a bed and B&B? Oh, uh, that was around the 90s, okay. after they did the renovations. So they had to, they renovated the original part of the house, which is what we're seeing there, off to our left now. Uh, they had to do a lot of work, though. So the house was in um, you know pretty bad shape. It had actually sat empty for a number of years. And, uh, you know, these old, uh, you know, large houses uh, don't keep up well without some tender love and care. So they had to replace many of the original support beams and do a lot of work there to get that original part of the house kind of up to snuff. And then they added the, um, the wing out the backside afterwards. Huh. So the, um, the same lady who, uh, you know, refurbished it and converted it into the B&B, she still owns it today. Huh. was owned by George Allen and his family. He was a wealthy businessman from Philadelphia, and he had decided that he liked spending his summers here in Cape May. So he had the house built in 1863 for himself and his family. also a popular venue for weddings. Cape May in general is a very popular spot for weddings. We do many ones at uh, venues like the Southern Mansion, at our various churches, and up on our beautiful beaches. But at the Southern Mansion here, the addition of that wing included a ballroom that is used as an event space too, so the reception for the weddings can be held in